Welcome back to a very special episode of Headphones Neil Reviews, and in this case is going to be kind of a recap update episode of a review I did a couple of years ago. So with all the talk of the Max Payne cameo in Alan Wake 2, I got to thinking it's about time for another Max Payne uh, game pl uh, replay. So I got back to thinking, like, when was the last time I played the first game, the second game, I've never played the third one. So um, in my review and recap, I realized that I had played Max Payne on Android in 2021, but I never got around to actually playing the second one, which is not available on Android. Um, it is available on Steam, so you could use Steam Link and things like that on Android, but it wasn't quite ready for that. My system specs are not up to par to play it on the desktop and do a screen recording or like gameplay recording and all that. So with all that out of the question, I thought I would do a replay of Max Payne. But before I did that, I wanted to see if the 1999 Mel Gibson movie Payback was streaming anywhere. And as it turns out, it, as of this recording, it is available on Amazon Prime. So I thought I would do a quick recap review for Payback, the movie I think that Max Payne was based on or right around that time as like a good Max Payne movie and compare it to the actual Max Payne movie that was released in 2008. So with that being said, to start it off with the Mel Gibson payback, overall I think the film still holds up. So you have a film that's kind of film noir, it has a blue tint to all of it, you have a wide range of characters. So you have Mel Gibson playing Porter, a petty criminal. You have him being two-timed by his best friend and his wife. And then he goes out, he goes after the outfit to get a 70 grand and then all the stuff he has to go through to get them to understand it's not the 130,000 that his friend used to get into the outfit. It's just his share of it, the 70,000. So all of that generally works well. Um, there's not really too much to say about the film for me, just it works out like the film from A to Z is very concise. It's one thing after another is evenly placed. Um, you have, you know, Mel Gibson making a thread and following through on it. Um, and just and then you have, you know, side things that get in the way of him getting his money. So uh, Val's um, girlfriend hit her like mob connections or whatever come after it porter just to because val said so and all of that so um overall very well done and i definitely recommend giving it a watch um the reason i say that it's like a max Payne prequel or a setup to the video game is when you have because aside from you know the characters being different you have you know certain shots that are very similar so the view in the game of the Acer building at the start of the game is very similar to the building for the outfit that Mel Gibson has to go into. You have him dual wielding pistols. Um, that um, people who run the outfit and who have his money are very similar to people like um, I think her late name was Horn, the main lady in the video game, um, and various other characters who are part of Acer Corporation. So when you're and then you have, you know, people who are his kind of his frenemies. So um, the people at the who are part of the outfit. So that main lady with the dog who kind of is like the Mona Sachs kind of character. Um, he, Gibson doesn't necessarily have any friends because, um, you know, he has a police after him. He has um, Stegman who's kind of weaselly and he has to deal with that guy. But he could be easily translated into a better character like... I think the guy's name was Vlad in Max Payne, but the main Russian guy who um, becomes his friend in Max's friend in the second game, I want to say, but kind of his friend in the first one. So things like that, like you can see how they translated the game from also from like instead of going after the 70 grand, he's going after the people who killed his um, wife and kids. So um, like I said, it's worth a rewatch. I definitely recommend giving it a watch. So as far as the Max Payne movie goes, um, 
from my review in 2021, I kind of remember that there were certain parts I liked, certain parts I didn't like. It wasn't really based on the video game and things like that. So I gave it a kind of mediocre review. But in my rewatch now for the uncut version, I actually thought it was a very good film. So I'm not sure what changed between then and now. And maybe a replay of the video game will solve it. But when I was watching it this time, I actually thought it was better than average. I think I was sure, well, I think I gave it a grade of a B plus, but it was like, you know, things like um, not all the main bosses were in there. The, they didn't really mention the storm of the century and all of that. But when I was watching it this time, a lot of the scenes that you have in the video game were translated into the movie. So you have, you know, the Roscoe Street Station from the start of the game in the movie. You have the dream sequence of Max finding his wife and kid. Um, you have the submarine area and then, you know, going to the Ragnarok Club and going to the Sky Terrace thing above it. Um, you have a view of the Acer building. The closing shot of the movie with Max at the top were good. And overall, things like that actually made the movie a lot better for me. But the things I took away from the movie film are things like not having the newscaster talking about the worst storm of the century or giving updates that way. Granted, you have, you know, things like BB and then um, Jim Bravura, played by Ludacris, who I thought was a good role, giving updates throughout the film. But I thought it would have been a good translation to have the news reporter um, giving an update so you have those characters watch a newscast to give that update with the, with the storm and Max's rampage and all of that stuff and little commentaries for Acer Corporation um, and then um, the voiceover by Max uh, a little bit more of that would have been good so granted they had a little bit of it throughout the film maybe two or three scenes but it would have been good to have you know um, when you have those scenes of them on his face or panning through different scenes of what he's looking at to have the voiceover of what he's thinking. So a little bit more of that would have been good. And then I think in the end of the film, um, I forgot exactly how he worded it, but they could have kept that exactly the same as the video game where he's gone through this stream of bullets and it was kind of a final exclamation point to what started it all as a simple case of uh, the murder of his wife and kids so um things like that stand out so there is certain things for me that could have been translated easily and things that or things that could have been translated easily and weren't and things that could have been translated and easily and were so that's why i'm kind of giving it a little bit more of a positive rating so i think i might have given it a b plus before but as a hesitant b plus as far as a uh, grade now, I'd probably give it a stronger B plus or maybe even an A minus to say that sure they missed out on certain things, but overall you have um, enough of the game in there. So while it's not necessarily the same as the video game, you're not going to have that. They covered enough of it to do what they needed to do. You have you know also the um, introduction of Mila Kunis. The guy who played Lupino was really good, um, introducing the Valkyr drug as something by Acer uh, Corporation as a super soldier and it gives them these nightmarish dreams was good. The guy in the tattoo shop to explain the Valkyrie was a good touch. So overall, I'm not quite as down on the film as I was before. I kind of get I'm more positive on it. So that's why I think replaying the game will actually be a good thing. So with all that being said, as far as deciding between the two movies, I want to give a slight egg or a slight leg up to Payback just because as a film that stands out on its own, it does a very good job. And the facial expressions that Mel Gibson has on his character as Porter kind of easily translate to what you see in the Max Payne video game. Not to say that uh, Mark Wahlberg did a bad job. I actually thought it was a good choice to pick him for Max Payne. He translated well. Same thing with um, Mila Kunis as Mona Sachs. Um, the one that stands out is, of course, Ludacris as Jim Bravura. But he plays uh, all of his roles really well, so I actually liked him in this role. Um, Lupino was good. Um, so things like that. I mean, you have the Russian mob, so there's that. But for me... Uh, Mark Wahlberg didn't have quite the expressions as uh, Mel Gibson did in a similar role, in my opinion. Um, 
And granted, they were trying to keep that stern look from the video game and translate it into a live action person, so I can appreciate what they were trying to do, but um, it would have been nice to have, you know, things like, or maybe give it a little bit more context like a comic book panel from the game, or even have just, like they did it once on, at the beginning of the movie, they had one week earlier overlaid on the Acer building, I think, or one of the buildings. So it, I would have it would have been nice to have maybe uh, a little bit more of that to say one week earlier, three days earlier, two days earlier, and do a countdown like that, or um, have like newspaper panels or something to kind of translate what's going on in the real world as news updates, and then you know even have the newspaper updates and like the old you know fifties and sixties um, movies, and then do a newscaster voiceover to explain it. So. Um, it would have seemed a little bit silly, but you don't necessarily have to do it in that, you know, old newscaster voice, do it in the current newscaster style, but have that kind of over view, like over, um, overlay voice with the newspaper or something like that. So for me, I give the edge up to, um, Porter just because you have the voiceover by Mel Gibson's character, you have the progress updates, you have his uh, voice expressions and all of that different stuff so um granted they're about 10 years apart but bayback feels like the better film so if they ever do make another max Payne movie um not to say that they, well, they could probably even put mel gibson in that role and do a, a old grizzled max Payne and put him back into a role like that so um with that being said um, that is all for this review, so I want to kind of give that update. In the show notes, I'll have a link to the 2021 gameplay uh, playlist that's up on YouTube along with the original review. So if you want to do a listen to that and this one, then that can be done as well. But I kind of wanted to get this review out so that um, just to kind of give an update that there is um, the payback is streaming on Amazon Prime if you want to give it a watch. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, what do you, which film do you think is better? You can comment on the uh, post on social media, which all the links are up at on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.